Up to this point in the temperature control lab, we've used first principles models, such as an energy balance, to derive our model predictions. Now another approach that's popular is uh, model identification with empirical or black box models, where we don't necessarily know the dynamics of the system or equations that govern them, and so we want to be able to use machine learning methods, uh, methods where the computer is able to learn the input to output relationships without the structure of a user imposing the, you know, necessarily a model form or uh, you know, fundamental relationships. And so we're going to get into a little bit more into the empirical approach, uh, start off with some very simple empirical models, in this case a second order system that has three unknown parameters, k, tau, and zeta. And we're just going to fit a second order system. Okay, this is a very common uh, di differential equation where you know there's some, set, some higher order dynamics. Uh, but this is just a second order system. So we're going to use a moving horizon estimation approach. In this example, you can also use a parameter estimation from batch data if you'd like. Okay, now if uh, we have the input heater and temperature of our sensor and also the ambient temperature, those go in you know, as the different uh, temperatures there and there's my input. And then I have just these three unknown parameters uh, right there. Okay, and as I adjust those, I'm going to be able to fit the relationship between the Q value, that's my input, and my desired thing that I'm trying to predict, which is the temperature of the sensor. Okay, and then we can also break this down into two first order equations. If we know that it's an overdamped second order system, then uh, it, this equation becomes uh, these two with these relationships here between zeta and tau and tau one and tau two from the second one. So for the second one, you just have K one, tau one and tau two. Those are your three parameters. And in the first one, you have these. Okay, so you can use either one for these. But what I want to do is I'm going to go through the code in a little bit more detail. But um, I'm just going to start by showing you how to, uh, first of all, get the code and, um, and then be able to run it yourself. So if you just come to the address that's on the temperature control lab. Okay, and there we have uh, slash heat.htm. Okay, and if you just go there, you'll get to the GitHub link, and if we just select that, you can go ahead and download or clone that archive. The thing that we're going to be dealing with here is in the moving horizon estimation. We're going to do a second order linear, and there you can see MATLAB, Python, and Simulink files. Okay, so I've already gotten this, and here's my second order system. I'm going to work with Simulink first of all. So if I just open up, so for example, I can open up this R2015A if you have an earlier version of MATLAB on yours, or the uh, other one right above it is I believe for 2017B, uh, but all of those should be compatible. So it's going to open up, and it's going to open up the block diagram that'll show the flow of information. You can also do this in MATLAB as well. Okay, so it'll take just a little bit of time to come up and open, but um, as this is going, what we'll do is we'll go through the code in a little bit more detail just to show how this is working. Okay, so the orange box in the upper left, that is the temperature control lab. So the thing that comes in is the heater, and the thing that comes out of that box is the measured temperature of the device. Now this is a physical device uh, based on Arduino that uh, you'll have to either build or buy. And then uh, you can see the flow of information down here to the moving horizon estimator. We have the heater and the measured temperature going into the MHE, and then the things that are uh, estimated are the temperature. So we have a measured temperature and an estimated temperature, and then we're going to compare the two 
over here in this box. Okay, and then we have the gain, the time constant, the damping factor, the zeta, and then I also threw in there the ambient temperature. So we have those four parameters that we're estimating as we go. So if I run this, then what it's going to do is it's going to uh, start and I'll just open up the temperature plot here. Okay, and I can adjust the heater input as it's going, so it's still thinking about it. And let me make this just a little bit smaller. So, okay, so I also have a web interface here. If I select TC, for example, I can see the measured versus the predicted. Okay, and those will start lining up as it starts uh, estimating. But let's go back here. Okay, so there you can see um, some measured and estimated values. Okay, and let me make this just a little bit smaller. I'm going to turn the heater on just a little bit higher. If you just drag that over and uh, you can turn on the heater to a higher value. You want to step this up and down a little bit just so it will, um, you know, you'll be able to see uh, some of the effect of, of what's happening here and you'll also be able to see the uh, different parameters update as the MHE proceeds okay and uh, and then I can change you know the heater up or down uh, change it to different values as it goes okay and so it's going to start trying to match up now let me go back to the web interface you can see that um, you know, it's still figuring out some of the parameters. It's filling up that data horizon. Um, you know, we gave it about a two-minute data window to look at to try to optimize its parameters over. And you'll see it try to align to the measured temperature values. Okay, now if you want to select, for example, the Q1 value, you'll be able to see some of the steps that we already made. And that's just going to continue to update that plot as it goes. And then you can see, for example, the KP value. It increased the KP value. It said it was too low, so it's increasing it. Here is your tau value. It went to uh, 60. And then the zeta value as well, it went lower. OK, you can also see the steady state temperature, the ambient temperature that's trying to estimate. It looks like it didn't move that one. OK, so it's starting to align a little bit better. As it's going, you can see inside this box, this is our interpreted MATLAB function. Um, and we just included, uh, it's this MHE uh, function right here that it's calling in order to be able to do the moving horizon estimation calculations. Okay, now you can see it is aligning a little bit better now. Uh, you know, the temperature, the measured and the predicted temperature. If I come back here to the real-time plot it'll show me just a little bit more about uh, about this now let's go and give it a temperature step again okay heater step so I'm gonna put that at 96 and then we will see uh, you know hopefully the parameters won't need to change as much because it's uh, start, it has this moving horizon estimation that's figured out some of the parameter values and Hopefully those will just be a little bit more constant now. We should see it start to track better the uh, temperature as it goes. Okay, so we can see you know it's increasing in temperature. Um, the parameter values are still changing a little bit. Okay, uh, but overall it's following the per the measured values much more closely. Okay, I'm going to go back to the web viewer for just um, you know this is the thing that just pops up let's just look at our KP values okay so you can see that the gain has leveled out our tau value that one is decreasing a little bit it decreased from 60 uh, down to you know right down here um, okay I'm gonna make that one full screen just click on the plot and make it full screen and so it's decreased about 51 right now okay so and then our Q value you can see that we just increased that to 100 or 96 right now okay and the temperature um, 
looks like that one is doing a much better job of tracking. So I'm going to close this web interface right here and just come back here. I'll go ahead and just shut off the heater. Let's see how it does during the uh, decrease. Okay, so this estimator is continually trying to estimate the gain, the time constant, the damping factor, and the ambient temperature for this empirical model. So instead of using an energy balance, we're using the empirical model. And uh, it looks like we have fairly, uh, fairly good uh, response here, okay, in terms of being able to predict the measured temperature. Um, Okay, and, and uh, what we'll do now is just as this thing is uh, cooling off, I'm, gonna, um, I'm just going to go ahead and stop this uh, because I want to also show the Python and the MATLAB versions as well. I'll just say no on saving that. Okay, and what I'll do is I'll go ahead and unplug this device just so I can have a cooler uh, device that... Uh, Okay, this one's a little bit hot. Okay, I'm going to plug in another device that I have. This one's going to be loaded already with the Python firmware. And then I'm going to open up the Python version. And let's run that one as well. This is in the main MHE. And I'll just open up with IDLE. And then run that. This is going to do basically the same, uh, same thing as... Uh, you know the MATLAB or Simulink version, you're going to be able to see a little bit more information here just as it goes. So I'm going to leave this real-time plot up just off to the side and uh, then we'll be able to see it. Okay, again it opens up a web interface for it for us. I'm going to minimize these and then we'll get into the code a little bit. Okay, so I'll just leave that up as it runs and put this over to the side let me see if I can get this uh, positioned correctly. Okay, there we go. Okay, so let's talk about the model. Now, it uses a model for both of these. Uh, here is our, this right here is our second order equation that I just use the one on the top. Okay, this one right here. In order to do that, I had to make just a new differential estate just for that one. Okay, so I had to make a, a new one that I had called, uh, in this case, I had called it uh, x2. Okay, so x2 equals uh, the derivative of x1. And then in this case, x1... Um, equals the derivative of tc dt okay so x1 equals uh, tc and x2 is a second derivative of that okay and so we had those two uh, differential equations and then i just added uh, the steady state value to x1 to get back to the uh, tc value okay and here is my uh, differential equation the dollar sign is dx1 dt like that and then this would be dx2 dt and that equals okay so we from this equation right here that equals a second derivative of x1 okay so there's our model um, that's the very first thing we need uh, is either to tell it the equations that we want to use with the uh, parameters that we're going to estimate or insert. In that case, the things that we're inserting are the Q values. Okay. Um, now we also need to define a data file. Now I often do this in Excel, uh, where I just say time and then give all the time points. We, I think we went down to 120 just with increments of two. And then you need to make sure you do a save as and you save it as a CSV file. Okay, now this will just, you can open it up with a text editor and it'll just say time. And if you have another column over there, let's say like Q2, it'll just be separated with a comma. And that would be zero, two, let's say this was zero, and then 100. Okay, so that would be your text file right there. If you just wanted to construct a CSV file, with a text editor.
Okay, so we have our model file and our data file. And then what we need to do is, is go ahead and just load our MHE application. So I'm going to go through this one in a little bit of detail uh, just in Python, but it's very similar to MATLAB or Simulink. Here's the MATLAB code. And I have it right next to the, uh, the Python code. So we have to define a new function for MHE. This is our MHE application. And then we also have the same thing right here, but in Python. Okay, and the very first thing that we needed to do is just define which server we're going to use and the application name. Um, the two inputs to our MHE are the measured temperature and the Q1 in both cases. Okay, we'll insert those into our application with the APM MES function. Then we solve the MHE problem okay, with the solve command. The next part of it is just to check to see that we got a good solution. So if app status equals one. Now this NLC, you can either use APM there or NLC dot. Um, you know, either one will work for the options. The newer one is the APM. Okay, and then we have, you know, just retrieving the new values for any of the new parameters. We get the new val. The, it's a kp.newval. We have those defined as FVs, feed forward variables or fixed variables. And then the, we also have the model prediction. We're getting the tc.model. Okay, left is Python, right is MATLAB. And then if it wasn't successful, we just give it some default values. Sometimes it just by one cycle, it isn't successful, then it'll pick up again. So I just gave it some default values to use just in case it uh, wasn't successful at solving it. It looks like all of these are successful. Okay, and then it just returns these from the function. We return the new parameters and the predicted temperature as well. Okay, so that was MATLAB and Python. I'm just gonna proceed just with Python now. It's just very similar in MATLAB, uh, so you should be able to follow along. Okay, this is how I initialize my moving horizon estimation. So in my, in my MHE, the big steps are insert measurements, okay, solve, and then retrieve solution. Okay, those are my three main steps of my moving horizon estimator. In my initialization though, what I'm doing is I'm loading the model file. If you remember, those are the differential equations that we had defined right here. Okay, so I have to load that model file, and then I'll also have to load this data file as well. So let's go load those. Um, I'm gonna do that with the APM load and the CSV load. And then I have to configure some of my parameters as FVs. Okay, those are the feed forward variables. It means I only want one value per MHE horizon. Okay, so over those 120 seconds, I only want one value of KP that's estimated. Now, I have an MV here as well. That's my Q1. Now, that one is going to be given by the user, but it might be adjustable every you know two seconds in my horizon so uh, that one you can see on the right hand side the q value is being stepped up and down so that new one needs to be an mv and then the one that i'm trying to align with the measurements is this tc one now that is uh, i'll define that as a controlled variable okay because i have measurements associated with it okay this one says i mode five that's moving horizon estimation and then I have my solver, that's my IPOP solver. You can change it to a different solver if you'd like. And then these are some tuning parameters. You know, for example, on my KP, that's the most that I allow my KP to move every cycle, which is Dmax. There's my lower bound and an upper bound. And then I set similar options for my tau, my zeta, and my TC ambient condition. Okay, and then I have status equal to one. That means turn it on, let it estimate those parameters. 
my F status is off. I'm not measuring those parameters, so my feedback status is off. Okay, and then this is the configuration for my Q values. So in this case, I am measuring my Q values, but I'm not optimizing them. I'll optimize those later for the controller. So I don't optimize them. Status is zero, but do measure. You include measurements for those. Okay, and then in my TC value, the status one means, um, in this case, I don't even need a, a status one there. Um, it's really just the F status, but for the controller later, that will say whether I want to control to a set point. So this one's kind of optional right here. Um, I just included it just in case you wanted to use that for the controller later. Okay, the web plot frequency, just update, you know, when it pops up that web interface, um, it'll update those plots every two seconds, and then just return that the moving horizon estimation was initialized successfully. Okay, so that's how you load and configure an MHE with some of the parameters that are there. Okay, and then the final thing that I want to do is just go through the script that runs this. Okay, and this is a just a high level what produces this plot on the right. The very first thing I do is just import TC Lab, that's pip installable. So you'll need to make sure you get that. And then also the AP monitor okay package, that's also pip installable as well. Okay, I connect to the Arduino. I set my runtime for 10 minutes. Now you can see it just finished right now. It's about 10 minutes into it. Um, I have every two, two seconds to run the MHE. This is just storing some initial values so I can plot them. Here's where I set these Q values right here. Now these are the steps that you see over here on the right. Okay, So just stepping up after six cycles, stepping down to 20 after 50 cycles, you know, just multiply those by two to get the approximate time. Okay, just um, here setting up, you know, calling the initialization, start the main loop, and then it's gonna go through and just make sure it sleeps for, you know, at least two seconds. Okay, this is just recording some of the time. And then here's where it reads in the temperature from the Arduino device. Okay, then I solve the moving horizon estimation, inserting that new temperature and also the heater value. And then the thing that's returned, all the parameters, I have uh, the KP tau zeta and TC steady state, as well as my estimated temperature. And then I also write my Q1 value to my device, my new one. And then the rest of it's just creating the plots. Okay, so the first subplot right here, I just have the measured and the predicted temperatures. Second subplot, I just have the Q values. You can see the heater two is not being used for this. Third subplot, I just have two of the parameters, KP and zeta. And then in the fourth subplot, I put in the tau and the TC steady state. Okay, and then just on the fifth cycle into it, I opened the web interface that you saw there. You can delete that or comment it out if you don't want it. Okay, just to shut down the Arduino, turn off the heaters in case you hit Control C. Okay, so that's it. Uh, you know, very similar with MATLAB. Uh, I just went through kind of at a high level overview what we're doing with this lab uh, in order to be able to run this moving horizon estimation and uh, and so the main thing are the main things are you have your model you have your data file you uh, create your function for your moving horizon estimator and also to initialize and load the model and data and configure some of your parameters and then you just run it in a script where you've set it up to uh, run through the diff, you know wait two seconds, run uh, collect the temperature and produce new parameter estimates. Okay, so that's it. Um, you know we'll have additional examples. There's also a lot of questions here to consider that I want you to go through. Um, you know just comparing the first order model, you know with the energy balance that you've solved previously with this second order one, and so you know why the physical justification 
for selecting the second order. I'll give you a little bit of a hint here. You do have a transistor, okay, with a little thermistor temperature sensor, and they're kind of right next to each other. If I just showed another profile, it's like this, where this might be the temperature of the heater, and that would be the temperature of the sensor. And when the heater turns on, you know, this is at a certain temperature and the heat propagates through to the sensor. And so we may need two differential equations to describe that because those might be at different temperatures. And so that for that reason, you would uh, prefer to have a second order equation versus a first order uh, from the energy balance. Okay, so what other empirical model forms? We use two differential equations here. We also have some time series model, like uh, you have auto, uh, auto regressive with exogenous inputs uh, type form, the finite impulse response, you have state space, and others. All of these can be used to perform the model identification. And so if you look at the GitHub site, you'll see some additional ARX and other model forms like state space for this. Okay, so here's some additional links right here that you can go look at. Uh, but there are some other empirical model forms, including some nonlinear uh, model forms that you could use, like neural net, artificial neural networks, or others. Okay. Um, also, asking about any nonlinear aspects to the data. So remember, from the energy balance, we did have a temperature to the fourth. Okay, minus temperature. Let's see, it was ambient. Uh, minus temperature to the fourth, you know, with our sigma, epsilon, and the area, you had this radiative heat transfer term, and those are nonlinear right there. So maybe at high temperatures, it doesn't fit as well. So just evaluate that as you're, you know, thinking about this estimator and using a linear model, which the one that we just used was a linear model. Um, you know, whether this is going to fit some of the nonlinear effects that might be there. Okay, and then you also have an additional challenge problem here, if you'd like. You have a multiple input, multiple output um, description. If you'd like to develop an estimator that includes not just the first heater response to one temperature sensor, but two heater responses to two temperatures, then I have an additional two equations here. Okay, you basically just copy those for the second one. And then you might have some additional parameters here that would help you uh, you know be able to model that effect on the uh, other temperatures okay so you'd have eight unknown parameters and uh, I also want you to compare you know in in this lab you know go ahead and compare with the energy balance solution as well and just see if you did a better job modeling some of these initial transients where there was a little bit of air from the energy balance. Okay, so that's it. I hope this helped going through the source code. Just a quick demo of some of the MATLAB, Simulink, and Python files. And I hope you enjoy this lab. I hope uh, it's informative that you can run with real data and help you tune your estimators.